Hello and welcome to the, another Spaz Kangaroo tutorial. This is going to be a new series on how to create a first person shooter in Unity. In the, this first video we're going to create a first person controller that can jump around and fire bullets. So let's start by creating a project and include the camera, character, environment, and particle system packages. We may not use all of these but I consider these kind of the standards. Uh, now we're going to create a first person character using the first person character prefab. So just uh, navigate to that structure in the project browser and drag and drop it onto the 3D view. Then create a plane just to have a floor. Delete the main camera because we don't need it anymore uh, because we have the first person camera. Then create a cube. Uh, this cube is going to be a placeholder for our gun. Name it gun, position it where the gun should be, and then parent it to the main camera. When you play the game now, it should work like a basic first person shooter. You'll have Wasad to move, the mouse to move the camera. Now we're going to create a new C Sharp script for our gun so we can fire bullets. I'll show you the code for that in a minute. And now uh, we're also going to create a sphere for the bullet. So just scale that down and position it. We're going to make that bullet a rigid body in this bullet will be the parent, um, the prefab for all our other future bullets. So the transform at the end of the gun just needs to be an empty. Rename it to barrel and parent the, it to the gun. Now drag it and position it at the end of the barrel. So double click your script and you should get a file something like this. Uh, now this file will by default have a start and update um, method. So this is C Sharp. C Sharp is I think a better language when we're using uh, Unity than JavaScript um, because JavaScript is a bit of a messy language and it's not great for large projects in my opinion. In any case, um, I'm going to be using C Sharp. If you know how to write JavaScript and you want to write JavaScript, go ahead. Uh, similar concepts exist and the method calls are pretty much the same across both APIs. So we're going to start by creating some public variables that we can assign um, within our editor. So we can set these values by dragging and dropping um, in the editor, which is pretty cool. Unity allows you to do that so you don't have to come up with some funky way of assigning them within the script itself so it, it gives you a bit more flexibility and allows you to separate your code from your actual uh, game for the most part so it's better uh, it's easier to like rip out components and put them in other things so start by creating a public uh, rigid body this rigid body will be our bullet we're gonna create an int for our bullet speed and as long as you type in camel script it will show up properly in the editor and we're finally going to create a transformation for the barrel, the end of the barrel, so that our bullet fires from the uh, proper spot. Now the reason I'm prefixing all of these variable names with public is because if I don't, it won't show up in the editor once I'm done. So once you save this, you can flip back to your editor, select your gun, and your gun script will show up right here. And now you can set your bullet, which I have as the sphere, the bullet speed, which I'll set to 2, and the barrel, which is the end of the barrel of the gun. So for now, we don't really need the start function. We may add it back later, but there's nothing we really need to do in the initialization. So we can just delete that method for now. If you ever need it again, you can add it back. So in our update function, we're going to check for input. So the input will be the fire one button. And if this input is um, happening, so if we're currently firing anything, if the button fire one is being clicked, which happens to be the left mouse button, but you can configure that in the bindings, we're going to spawn a bullet. Now this spawn bullet function hasn't been defined yet, so we're going to find that right now. It 
in our spawn bullet function, we're going to create a rigid body. This will be our new bullet that we're going to instantiate. Uh, and instantiating is just copying some other object that we've already had. So we're just going to copy the bullet that we assigned in the editor. Uh, and the f so that first argument is going to be bullet, since that's uh, what we're copying. Our second argument is the position, so we're going to create a new vector 3 for the position. So we're just going to take the barrels uh, position and copy that to our instantiated bullet. And the last argument is the rotation. Um, this doesn't matter a whole lot, we just want to make sure we're pointing in the right direction. Um, so we're just going to take the barrel's rotation too. If we uh, flip back to the editor right now, we'll get this cannot implicitly convert type object to rigid body error. And this is because for some reason instantiate returns a, an object, it doesn't return the type of the first argument. So we just have to make sure we cast that to our type that we need. So we're just going to cast that as rigid body. And finally, we got to make that bullet move because otherwise it'll just plop right to the ground. So just add a force. And our force is going to be a vector 3. So what we're going to do is just take the bullet's forward transformation. So this just gives us a vector 3 with the forward um, direction mapped to 1. And we're going to multiply that times the bullet speed. And now when we flip back to our editor, that error will be gone, and we can hit play. And when we do, you should be able to uh, create bullets. Uh, now, I didn't assign enough speed to that, so we're going to try upping this to something like 20. And hopefully, you can see they're falling forward a little bit now. Let's throw some more force at it. So when you hit about 200, they start actually going forwards. Load your bullet and set its collision detection to continuous dynamic so that it does higher quality collision detection and won't phase through other objects at high speeds. So that's it. That's all you have to do to get a basic first person controller working. It's fairly simple in Unity and I'll be continuing this series a little bit more in the next few months. Make sure to like, favorite, subscribe, let me know what you think of the series so far. If there's anything that confused you, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to reply. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all later.